You expect clean, clear drinking water to be there when you turn on the tap. But have you ever wondered where it comes from? The water that comes out of your faucet probably fell as rain or snow near your community's well. Rain and snow seep into the ground and move down through openings in soil and rock to the water table. Below the water table, the soil is completely saturated. This is called groundwater. And that groundwater is more vulnerable than you might think. Groundwater moves underground from hilltops to lowlands where it empties into streams, lakes, and wetlands. Pollutants can also soak into the ground and move with groundwater into your community well. Gas can leak from underground storage tanks. Chemicals can leach from landfills, spills, or abandoned barrels. Fertilizers and pesticides from farms and lawns. Even the salt used to melt snow and ice can contaminate your water supply. Cleaning up this kind of contamination can be an expensive and frustrating problem. The city of Chippewa started looking at a problem with elevated nitrate levels, uh, or rising nitrate levels, back in the mid-80s. Uh, the consultant that was working on the, for the city at that time looked at, uh, did some hydrogeological study of where the water was coming from, trying to identify where might a source of the nitrates be. And uh, probably after about three years of, of work, came to the point that it wasn't a point source. It was probably just general activities within the recharge area, such as agriculture, uh, maybe some septic systems outside the city. But the, the main problem was this was mainly activities outside the city limits that the city had no jurisdiction over. Because of the high nitrates, Chippewa Falls had to install a treatment facility. What if your community discovered a contaminated well? You'd be forced to respond like Chippewa Falls did to continue to provide safe drinking water to your customers. You might even have to abandon the contaminated well and drill a new one. In the last 15 years, Wisconsin communities have spent over $10 million dealing with nitrate contamination and over $16 million to address contamination from organic chemicals like gasoline and pesticides. How can your community avoid these costs? Wellhead protection is a way that communities can protect their water supply at a fraction of the cost of cleaning up groundwater. It is the ounce of prevention that is worth a pound of cure. Wellhead protection is a program that allows local citizens to set up a protection strategy for their drinking water supply. It brings people together to assess where the water comes from what are potential problems that may be within that area that they're, they're drawing their water, and then let them set up a process to, per, to protect and to prevent any contamination of the drinking water. It makes a lot more sense to try and prevent contamination of a drinking water supply than it does clean it up. The building we're in here houses a nitrate removal facility. Maybe if, if wellhead protection had been in place 15, 20 years ago, we might not have been in the spot of having to have built a facility like this. How do you get started? First, form a committee. In a wellhead protection program, what communities want to do is they want to bring in as many different people that are impacted by their drinking water as they possibly can and set up a real diverse committee that uh, could develop a wellhead protection plan. And it, that could involve people from schools, from emergency response programs, from the local school boards, village or city councils. Uh, to bring all those people together that have a definite interest in their drinking water supply and help them come up with a process that's best going to meet the needs of their own community. Uh, in the early 1990s, uh, the city of Wapaka started to see elevated nitrate levels in their drinking water and traced it back to wells five and six, which are two large producers. Uh, approximately 80% of our uh, drinking water came from those two wells. And um, the city decided at that point, the city council and the mayor decided that they needed to really pursue some type of wellhead protection commission, uh, a joint effort through the townships and the city uh, to actually address this topic. He appointed uh, mostly town chairmen from the four different townships surrounding the city, um, city aldermen, um, technical staff, residents within the city. So really a diverse uh, group of people 
uh, to try to tackle this situation. Keep citizens informed of your plans during the process by working with local media. Information and education are vital to the wellhead protection process. The City of Chippewa Falls Wellhead Protection Planning Project was supported by an extensive public information and education program. Uh, through that effort, uh, we worked with the local media to inform the general public uh, of the wellhead protection planning process and to inform them of public informational meetings that were scheduled to explain the plan. Once you've formed a committee, then you'll need to identify the land area which supplies groundwater to your well. Knowing the boundaries of this recharge area is critical. Any contaminants in the recharge area have the potential to seep into the groundwater with rain and snow. They could eventually be pumped out of the well into your community's water supply. To figure out the size of the recharge area for your well, you'll need to know what kinds of soil are present and how far and fast the groundwater moves toward your well. This includes the geology of your area. Uh, the city then um, went on to hire the Central Wisconsin Groundwater Center to identify the recharge area for wells five and six. Uh, the one-year, five-year, and 10-year recharge area was identified, so they really knew where uh, exactly uh, these nitrates were coming from. And it was identified that um, primarily the corn and soybean fields in the vicinity of the wells were, uh, and the nitrogen fertilizer used on those fields were turning into nitrates and affecting our drinking water. Once the recharge area has been mapped, identify the potential and existing sources of contamination in that area. Contact state and local agencies like fire, health, hazardous waste, and emergency management that regulate potential contaminant sources. Longtime residents of your community may also know about past land uses that could pose a threat to your water supply. An inspection of the properties nearby can ensure that you've covered all the possibilities. Finally, develop a plan to safeguard and manage the land around your well. Wapaka protected their wells by checking groundwater quality and working with local citizens. The city then proceeded to install eight monitoring wells uh, circling the wells five and six uh, to monitor those uh, for nitrates as well on a quarterly basis. We've been working with the farmers to apply less nitrogen fertilizer and we've actually entered into contracts with them to farm soybeans instead of corn. Nitrogen uh, fertilizer demands are much less than soybeans, 10 to 15 times less than corn. Uh, by doing this, the farmer puts down much less nitrogen fertilizer, which turns into nitrates. We then pay him that cost differential to make him financially whole. The farmers cooperated voluntarily with the city of Wapaka. However, you may decide to pass an ordinance to restrict land use around your well. Chippewa Falls came up with an ordinance that recognizes two separate protection zones. The inner zone includes the area that recharges the city wells within 30 days. The outer zone includes the area that contributes water to the wells within five years. Their land uses are more restrictive the closer you get to their wells. Besides the nitrate treatment facility and ordinance, Chippewa Falls used education and public participation throughout the planning process. They continue to rely on education with a groundwater guardian program to protect their wells. Education, I think, is a, an important component of it, and hopefully we'll use that more than enforcement of an ordinance to control what goes on in the recharge area. And, and it's much less expensive to educate people to prevent rather than to clean up. Wapaka and Chippewa Falls have taken positive steps in response to threats to their water supply. Marshfield developed a strong educational program to prevent well contamination. In that community, like many others in our state, groundwater is becoming scarce. Groundwater Guardians for the Marshfield area is sponsored by the Groundwater Foundation, which is a, a national nonprofit program um, that sponsors local communities to take proactive steps in promoting groundwater education. The Groundwater Foundation sponsors the program and it gets the information out there to the people, but the communities actually run it themselves. I wanted uh, my involvement to have a genuine impact, if you will, in the community. And uh, Groundwater Guardians gave me that opportunity to have 
uh, an impact to go out and educate the rest of the community on some preventative type of situation. After all, we are using the same water now as we've always have. There's no such thing as new water. We've got to pr protect the water for ourselves today as well as for the future. Each of these communities took a different approach to managing wellhead protection. You'll want to tailor a plan to address the unique circumstances in your area. Why should you develop a wellhead protection plan? First, it's cost effective. A modest investment can save a community hundreds of thousands of dollars by preventing contamination. Our avoided costs, I think, have been substantial. We've avoided the construction of a nitrate removal facility by trying to do good management of our groundwater resource in the area. That facility could run one and a half to two million dollars, and I made that very clear to the Common Council that not only the capital costs, but the operational costs of fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year can actually be avoided by working with the farmers in the area and doing the right things to manage that resource. Wellhead protection also provides a positive climate for economic growth. In Marshfield, it was a win-win situation. They were doing an industrial park development near one of our well fields. We were able to work with the mayor, with the common council, um, and with the city engineers to define what type of industrial park this will be and to limit the types of businesses that we would allow to go in there. And that, that was real effective and, and um, it, was, it was real beneficial to the water department because we ended up with a real nice defined wellhead protection plan for one of our aquifers right near the city. We had a lot of benefits from that because uh, once, once they were educated, as other projects and as other developments came up, it was a lot easier for us to work with them. They understood. People in communities, I think, understand that in order to have a strong economic base, you also have to have a good water supply because businesses aren't going to move into a community if they don't have a good drinking water supply to agree. Businesses need good water just as much as anybody else does. There are many resources available to help with wellhead protection planning. The Department of Natural Resources has a number of publications, including model wellhead protection plans and ordinances. Department staff can meet with your committee to answer questions and review plans. Call toll-free 877-268-WELL for more information. Or check out our website, www.dnr.state.wi.us. Click on Go to Some Topics, then select Wellhead Protection. Another group that can help you is the Wisconsin Rural Water Association. They provide wellhead protection planning assistance for communities with 10,000 people or less. They also have a website, www.wrwa.org. For cities in central Wisconsin, the Central Wisconsin Groundwater Center is another resource. This is their website address. To set up a groundwater guardian program like Marshfield and Chippewa Falls, contact the Groundwater Foundation. They also have a website, www.groundwater.org. And yet another place to begin is with your phone book. There you'll find engineering firms and professional hydrogeologists willing to help your community develop a wellhead protection plan. By developing wellhead protection programs in communities, people really have an opportunity to be proactive about their drinking water. It just makes sense to try and prevent contamination rather than having to clean it up later. And it makes sense not only economically, it makes sense as far as health and welfare of generations to come. 